message of salvation and take those words with them into the present world where they can continue to talk about you in ways that you will be lifted up. Take control our Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, the our pastor called me and gave me an assignment. Uh, he just said, uh, Pastor Itama, you will bring the word to the people today. And as you know, I just said, yes, sir. I didn't say anything, I said, yes, sir. And immediately I began to, 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 to talk to Jesus. I said, well, now, Jesus, what would, you, what, what would you have me say to your people? And right away, the Lord gave me the word. He said, come and talk to my people about my mysterious gift. So the title of the Lord that is, but the mysterious gift of the Lord our God. You know, the Bible says that, that from the beginning of time, the Lord had a purpose, but he hid it from us. He hid it from us. Can you think about it for a minute? The Bible says that he knows all things. You know, you know when the Lord beautifully and wonderfully made you, that is way back then, for those of us who are here, but not too long ago for the young kids. He knew about you. He knew where you would be today at this moment. He knew everything about you. But he also knew that there is something he wants to reveal to humanity, but he kept it hidden. Beloved, it is not that he wanted to hide his purpose from us. No. He wanted to, the Lord wanted all oh, praise in the name of the Lord. I never understood this until just, just a few days ago. When, I, when the Lord opened my heart and opened my mind to understand. He's, he wanted to keep it hidden until such a time when the Gentiles will become equal with the Jews so that they can come together and become a new people to form in one body. Oh, praise the Lord. You probably don't know what I've just said. Because if you know, you will be thanking Jesus. He kept his purpose, his great, extraordinary, and supernatural gift to himself, waiting for a special time when the Jews and the Gentiles become equal so that together they can form one body. Beloved, the Bible makes it clear to us that there came a time when Jesus met this man called Saul on the way to Damascus. And talked to him and said, these things that you are doing, I can see that you are doing it with zeal, but you are doing the wrong thing because you are persecuting me. 
And Paul and Saul asked him, well, what, what, uh, who are you? What are you talking about? You know the story. I'm not going to stand here and begin to, 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 to go back to it. But the bottom line is, Jesus gave him a commission. He said, I want you to take the message of good news to the Gentiles. And Paul reveals this to us in the book of Exodus. I mean, sorry, Ephesians. Take this message that I, I am proud to take this message, this gospel of good news, to the Gentiles. Right? And now, in revealing that, in the process of preaching the good news of the purpose of God, the Jews and the Gentiles began to forge a new union so that today they become one people called the body of Christ the church and, and, and the Bible tells us from the beginning of time that the prophets were talking about this that this will happen but now it became revealed to you and to me and to all who, will come to, who came to Christ that Jesus was to come. And when he came in time past, he gave of himself for his body to be torn apart, for his blood, pure unblemished blood, to be shed at the place of the skull, so that you and I and everyone that will come to him will become his brother, his sister. And together with the Jews, we will form one union. That's why it is revealed in John 3.16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only, his only, who amongst you can give your only son? But the Lord our God gave his only son. The, the Bible says that when the son came, he was, he, oh, praise the name of the Lord. He was beaten, his body was crushed, torn apart with a hook. They struck it into his back and pulled it. And the Bible said the father was happy. Yes. The Bible, that's what the Bible, the father was glad. That that was the son. Remember, in the garden of Gethsemane, wanted said to the Lord, "Take this cup away, take this cup." But he said, "Well, but 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 not my will. Let it be your will. Let it be your will. Whatever you want." Remember, that's why the father was glad, was happy, because he submitted totally. I remember one, two or three Sundays ago, Elder George was standing here and bringing the word. He said, partial obedience is no obedience. I don't know if you remember. So his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, did not obey his father partially. He obeyed his father completely, totally. To, to the point where he was killed. Beloved, now, I don't know, uh, my, my, uh, uh, my son is not here, I would ask him to get up and, and ask him, well, if I ask you to go and die, would you die? <laughs> I'm, sure he will, <laughs> I'm sure he will look at me, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know? but, but, but maybe I can ask one of his, oh, Anthony, suppose your mother, uh, your father, her father says, well, look, I want you to pay me, look, stay in that house. Don't step out. And then there is fire. Will you sit down there, Anthony, or will you run out? He said, forget my father. I'm going to take my care of myself here. What will you do? I'm sure I said, I will run so fast. <laughs> but Jesus knew what was coming. And yet, he submitted, he surrendered, he obeyed as a baby. Beloved, it is not easy. He obeyed as a baby. And he was killed. And then the Bible says that because he obeyed unto the end, he was given a name that is above all names. 
that at the mention of that name, all knees and all tongues will confess. And so in Daniel, the hidden mystery of the gift of God from the beginning of time was revealed to you and it was revealed to me and to everyone. Everyone that will come according to the scripture in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12 that if you will come to me and obey me I will give you the power to become my father's son. Only if only you will come. Because you only come to, cry, to, to, to God through Jesus Christ. That means the condition for you and for me and for anybody else to become Jesus' brother, therefore a fellow heir to the throne, is to recognize that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus came specially because of your depraved nature, because of your sins, to buy you and, and you and you and everyone to buy you freedom. Not because he did anything wrong. Not because he committed any sin. But because you are his inheritance. And he came and made the gift. The Bible says that the gift was mysterious, was hidden, that it is mystery. Let, let, let us read but very quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, verse Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 9. Uh, if anybody finds it before I do, please read. If I find it before you, I'll read. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 9. I have it. Let me read. The Bible says, verse 6, Howbeit we speak wisdom amongst them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that came to naught. Verse 7 says, We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. A mystery. Something hidden. Something that we don't understand. We don't understand what constitutes this misery. We, 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 we have no idea. It says, even the hidden wisdom which God obtained before the world unto his glory. From time back, from the beginning he knew. Because the Bible tells us that he declares the end from the beginning. Verse 8 says, which none of the princes of this world knew. Nobody knew this mystery. For had they known had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Then verse 9 says, I, 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 I want you to hear this. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Amen. You have not seen. You did, look, look, you didn't know until you began to receive the word of good news. When you began to receive it and, you began, and your, your heart began to get prayed, you began to say, well, this kind of life, this, this kind of life that I'm living, but, but, but this kind of God that is, that is going to do this kind of thing for me, a sinner man like me. So, you did not know. But God and His will revealed them unto us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things. You will, not, you will not come to God unless the Spirit, the Spirit convicts you and brings you to Christ. You will hear the word. And beloved, when we hear the word, we become stubborn and stiff-necked. We begin to, to we become cynical. Sometimes we argue, maybe, maybe a messenger of God brings a word and you begin to sit there and you begin to say, well, what is he talking about? Oh, maybe he knows that I did something here and there and he's beginning to talk about me. Well, but beloved, the word of God is given freely 
and it's designed to let you understand this mystery that the Lord has revealed to you. But till today, even as you sit here, there are many to whom the, myster the mysterious gift is still hidden. They have no understanding because the Bible says to them it is foolishness. The death of Christ on the cross is foolishness. They, I can't understand it. What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? But for you, that you have not seen Christ, but you have received the word and you've made that decision. It is, it is the power of God in your life. That condition is to receive this mysterious gift and remember that, that mysterious gift is the salvation that Jesus bought for you on the cross of Calvary by giving his life. You have to come and receive it and confess that you are you, you, you will uh, be a partaker of that gift. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2, beginning from verse 3, the Bible, say, the Bible says, what makes us, or you, or anybody else, to think and to believe that you will escape? If anybody says this, we so that people can hear. This is not Pastor Itama talking. It is the word of God. And the Bible says that the word of God is spirit and it is life. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape? How shall you escape, my beloved, if you neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? The prophets talked about it. And Jesus came and talked about it. If you ignore it, if you are indifferent to it, and you refuse to accept it, beloved, you will not escape. I didn't say that. Uh, pastor will say, you know, you know what, <laughs> The book, the book, the book says it. How are you going to escape? But beloved, you are not going to escape. When you have a time, read, write it down. If you get home, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Read it. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Read it. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So I've just read. And then Philippians 2, 11. Read this Bible addresses. It will tell you you don't have an opportunity. You don't have the chance of escaping if you know this mystery that has been given to you and then revealed to you if you've heard it it is because you are refusing if you keep refusing beloved the time of God is at hand you see tomorrow is not promised to you the next hour it's not promised to you. The Bible says that you have to make the decision when you have received the word. Psalm 95, 7. If you have heard the word, do not harden your heart as in those days of the provocation. So, beloved, Receive the word. Recognize that you are a sinner. Make a decision for Jesus. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the time of salvation. Receive it and come and become a partaker in the heritage that the Lord Jesus has prepared for, prepared for all that will come to him. Thank you, our Father and our God. Thank you once again for reminding your children about the great gift, the extraordinary, the supernatural gift of salvation that you have given to all. Father, for those who have received, I give you thanks. For those who are yet to receive, 
because of their unbelief, because of their cynicism. For those who are yet wondering, Father, speak to their hearts. Let this word of yours continue to prick their hearts so that eventually they can return unto you and become partakers in this heritage. Thank you, our Father and our God. May your name be mightily exalted in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. before we get into child dedication. <clears throat> um, revised ministry plan is out. If you don't get one,